All right, so what are we doing here, you might ask? Well, take a look. We got these here, nice cedar boards. We're gonna make us one of them cedar chests. Um, this is a Christmas present I'm making. Uh, I'm not gonna get into any other specifics about it, but make me a cedar chest. And I'm gonna take you along for the journey. All right. All right, the first thing we did was figured out some measurements. Now, our long side went with these here. These are 40 inches across there. Uh, get the camera there. That's 40 inches. Now, these ones here are going to be the short side. These are 23 inches. That should make us a nice size box. So, now that we got these done, now we got to, uh, I have to go up town because I didn't realize I didn't have a tongue and groove router set. So, I got to go get some router bits for a tongue and groove set. Um, that way I can tongue and groove these, lay a little bit of glue down in the seam, put them together, clamp them down with the, uh, what do they call it? Um, rail clamp or whatever it's called clamp it down and let it dry overnight and then I'll do the same thing tomorrow with the other two because I only have four four clamps but that way I'll have my four sides then from there you gotta figure out the top and bottom all right as you can see I got all my boards cut for my four sides so they're all cut got two uh, small side small side then a big side and a big side haven't done the root, the floor and the um, top yet, but I got the boards for them. Also got some of these here for uh, these one and a half by ones for trim. Um, but now we're gonna go over here to the router. And we got that bit right there, so we're gonna round the edges. Now the reason I have them laid out like this is because I want the bottom, bottom right here. I want to be flat. The top I want to be flat. The top up there. But these, I want these to round in on each other. It'll just give it a nice little flow to it. So let's go ahead and get those routed. Can't find my glasses. Safety first. All right, now we're ready. Nice rounded edge there. Nice rounded edge. Let's go there. I should go like that. I actually want to go like that. Put that one on the bottom. So we got to make sure we run them through upside down because the way it curves the edge we want it to be like this we want it to curve in like that because if you do it the other way then it's just flat up against there and you can't tell the difference it looks you can't tell the difference it looks the same so we want it to look like that we want the edges to round into each other there now see how much better that looks with them ribs on there looks a lot nicer nice and smooth it just adds a little bit of a uh, style to it I mean here it looks like it does but once that stuff's glued and joined together you're not going to see it as much whereas that it's going to look good it's going to stick out it's going to be sharp all right the next thing I did was took a strip of cardboard here and uh, made me some marks in it right there that was my first attempt, it was a failed attempt. But maybe some marks right here, here. There's my finger. So I went four inches in, 12 inches in. And from this side I went in four inches and 12 inches. Then that way I can lay that on top of my board and I can make my, uh, my holes even on each one. So I just put this, I can, what I can do this with one hand. Put this here, lay that on top. No, nope, can't see it board up on edge lay this on top so I have a template to go off of so all my dowel rod holes line up next thing to do is to drill them out now I took the drill bit here measured up an inch because I want a two inch dowel rod holding this together so that's one inch here and then the other inch will be on the next board 
that way it'll sit on top there once I put some glue on there it should hold it in place pretty good so like I said measured up one inch on the drill bit put the tape on there so I have a stop that way I know how far, how, how far down to drill now I almost forgot this crucial part I had to make a little rig here the clamp and some 2x4s that way when I put my board up against there it's straight that way when I line up my hole there the drill bit push that board against there it comes right down where it needs to be very important because you don't want to drill it at an angle you want it to be a straight hole all right now once you get uh get those all drilled out you're going to take some of this here this quarter inch um, dowel rod and cut it into two inch sections then when you take that put your dowel rod in your holes you join all your boards together like so now I know what you're saying there's a gap I can see the dowel rods but once we put a little bit of uh, glue here and then we squeeze it all together put it in the clamp so it glues and strengthens and tightens up you're not going to see that you're just going to see this nice little roll right here that's it now mind you I've never done this before so I'm learning as I go myself but so far I mean it looks like I got some edges that are uneven so once it's all together I'm going to straighten those up reroute those edges so they're real nice and smooth make everything look all sharp and fancy so alright that's one wall done three more to go then the top and then the bottom so let's get to work alright once you have all four of them done now you're going to get the clamps out you're going to get some wood glue out this here is the uh, tight bond original wood glue what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of this glue down here in the seams and then we're going to put these clamps on clamp it together so it's nice and tight and these seams stay together flip them upside down put some weight on them so we get a little bit of that uh that rocking out of it wait 24 hours take the clamps off and then do the other two because we only got four clamps so it's going to be a while all right once you get it glued and clamped together you're going to put some weight on it because in the middle here it's going to buckle up so you need to put some weight on it to keep it down so that way whenever it dries you take the clamps off it's nice and flat so we're going to let that sit for 24 hours because that's what the glue calls for it says you can take the clamps off in a, clamps off in a half hour but not to put any stress in the joints for 24 hours but we're going to let it sit overnight just to make sure give it at least a good 12 hours before we take the clamps and weight off it so do this and we got the other two over here the other sides we're going to do that too we'll get back to you in a couple days now that those are all glued and joined together we're going to take the belt sander here like this and uh, go over these boards now you can see here this first one I already did that uh, it's not perfect I mean I left some of the uh, some of the uh, roughness to it it's smooth to the touch and I'll go over it again with some finer grit but it's smooth to the touch but it looks good but I wanted it to have still a little bit of uh, roughness to it. But, I mean, you can see going from this to that is a big difference. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, uh, this belt sander here, finish going over it. Once I go over them all on the back, then I will switch to the paper and go with a nice smoother paper. Uh, I got some 150 here. Uh, which probably 150 is the smallest I'll go for the backs but on the fronts I'm gonna go with like a 220 something to make it really nice and smooth so finish sanding these alright once you get everything sanded I'm gonna put it all together now well not all of it but the four sides anyways we got this uh, air gun here it's got two inch brad nails in it now when I line this up I want to line kind of see where the router edge stopped right there I want to line that up with the edge of this because afterwards I want to sand it and I'm going to taper this down so it kind of meshes into there I just think it'll look better so now to run the uh, brad nailer nail this together then I'm going to use a piece of angle iron draw out some holes to make a reinforcement corner for the inside just to make it a lot stronger alright so here's where we're at we got this uh, this here thing around this here is the top so I went and I routed these edges just like I did the other one this one here is the bottom I did not router it because it's the bottom you ain't gonna see it so it doesn't matter 
One thing very important that I forgot to mention is you have to put weight on these before you crank them down with your, uh, your bar clamps. Because if not, they will spring up on you and that's not good. You want these to be tight together so that these seams here are nice and tight. And you want this weight on there so they don't buckle and it keeps them nice and flat. Now over here, we got the first part of the box put together and it don't look too bad. Um, but I think we're going to take, uh, see where it held with, some dowel rods here. Find them. Yeah. I think we're going to take the dowel rod, like such, and place it, we're going to put some glue on it, put it in there, just to give it a nice little ribbed kind of look to it. Maybe over here in the light looks a little better. So yeah, you got that crease there. Put that dowel rod in there just like that. Just to make it nice and clean. You won't see any of that glue in there. Because it looks good the way it is. But I just think that adds a nice little piece of aesthetics to it. So with that being said, got to wait another day for uh, the top and the bottom to dry. Then we can start putting those together. I changed my mind on the angle iron because... I was thinking about the angle iron for the inside corner, and here's the problem I have with that. The angle iron I have, this stuff here is way too heavy. So what I did is I went up and uh, I had to go up town anyways to buy some stuff, because you always do when you're doing a project. And I bought some of these right here. Yep, where are they at? These right here. These are uh, one and a half inch corner brackets thingies. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to powder coat them black, that way they meet, uh, they match the, uh, the rest of the hardware I have. Yeah, come here. Let me show it to you. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. That's uh, one of the hinges there. But that way, the black matches the rest of the hardware. I also got the, uh, somewhere. Right there's one of the handles. It's going to go. There that. One on the uh, one on each side, and one on the top. So, see you tomorrow. We'll get some more work done on it. Now that we got our uh, top there done and our bottom here done, I'm gonna lay this box on top of here, and then that way, I can take a pencil and make a line around here, just like that, to make it the best possible fit on the bottom. <clears throat> Once that bottom's done, I took some of those leftover boards and I ripped them with the table saw down. I'm going to use these, not like that, but on the inside. Well, I guess I can show you. Like that down there. I just can't even reach in there to grab it now. I'm going to use that there to uh, reinforce that bottom, make it nice and strong. So, let's get this line made and get this board cut. All right, once that underside sanded, it's cut, sanded, and it's setting on top there. And everything seems to be pretty flush. Now, that corner sticks out, but that's all right. Because remember, we're going to take a sander, we're going to round all that off make it look nice and uh, uniform. The only thing left to do now, take the brad nailer, nail this thing down to the box, and then we're gonna go back to these, uh, these strips over here, and we're gonna nail those on the inside, laying across like this, just to really support those ridges. All right, we're getting there. All right, now that our bottom's on there, and it's, it's pretty solid on there, and took those inside pieces, put them ribs in there like that, really protect that floor because this is going to have legs on the bottom of it, so that floor will not be on the floor. If that was just directly on the ground or on the floor, then uh, I wouldn't be worried about it. But being that there's going to be legs on it, if a little kid decides it's going to climb in there, it's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, I mean, look at the size of this thing. I can fit inside that thing. So now I'm going to take. Uh, some of this right here is uh, one and a half by one. I'm going to router an edge on it and make some trim to go around this top lip. That way whenever the lid closes, it actually is supported a little bit. It'll be supported on this edge here. It'll also have a little edge there of uh, trim going around it. One, it'll make it look pretty. And two, it'll uh, give that lid a little bit more to grab onto to uh, seal off. So that's where we're going next. Look at that beauty right there. All right, now, that looks like crap. Um, I don't know why, but my router 
does not want to cut that groove very well and it just bounced all over the place I ran it through twice thinking maybe I could smooth it up but no it looks horrible so back up town I'm gonna buy a couple pieces of trim that look similar to that uh, I like the way it looks on the box but it just man that looks that looks horrible sometimes you can't reproduce things at home that you can just go buy but oh well let's learn go buy some uh, trim gotta buy some more dowel rods and I want to get some uh, tongue seed oil to coat this thing with so I was doing a lot of reading trying to figure out whether I wanted to use uh, lacquer or oil I think I'm gonna use oil I think it'll look better I think it'll smell better yeah I don't know all right I gotta go get some wood all right, I'm back from the store. Got this trim here. Now, I haven't put it on yet, but this is the closest thing I could find to what I was trying to cut. So we're gonna put this along that top edge like that, nice and square, nice and smooth on there. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna add a nice, nice lip to it. So we're gonna cut uh, 45s on these. It'll be uh, like that. That way, whenever this piece comes up, it matches it. We got a nice good corner there, so let's get that done. All right, now that we have our lip on there, uh, got it all flushed here, sanded down, so it's nice and smooth. It looks pretty seamless. Um, next thing we got to do is maybe not the next thing, but one of the things we got to do is we got these cracks here from uh, the rounded edges. We're going to take a piece of tape, put it on the bottom here, and then inside there we're going to mix some uh, wood glue and uh, uh, where's that? show you here some of this uh, real fine sawdust down there mix those two together pack those holes that way it'll look uh, it'll blend in there pretty good and it just won't look so uh, it's like such a gap you have to do the same thing with the back here because I don't want to put a piece of trim on the back because it's going to go against the wall so what's the point so we're going to fill that hole in there too but uh, yeah it's coming along I'm liking it now, I know a while back I talked to you about these edges, and I said that uh, we're going to clean these up, because they look kind of, I mean, it looks alright, it's nice and rustic looking, but uh, it just doesn't have the look I want it to have. So, went ahead and started sanding on the other side, and as you can see, it is a much, much nicer rounded edge to it. It still has the rustic look to it, but it just, it feels a lot better on the hands. And uh, I just think it looks better that way. Being rounded off a little more contour than the other edge, which is pretty rough and uh, just not as smooth and enjoyable. Get the other side sanded down now. All right, I got the top set on there. Got the uh, hinges drilled and put into place. However, I did not fasten the hinges to the inside of the top because that there is a two-man job and I don't have anybody here to give me a hand so when I get some help I'll uh, get those put into place after those are screwed on I think I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the, uh, the dowel rods in these creases to uh, start dressing up after that I might do the legs or I might do the legs and then the dowel rods I'm not sure but next thing I gotta do though is definitely get these uh, hinges attached to the top of the door then after that I can get the uh, slats put across there to brace it so if anybody pushes on it they don't fall through or break it so alright okay now we got the, the lid screwed on there got the hinges in the back there see um, we got lift it up got them boards put in see the other side of the hinges that black hardware looks really good in there and I uh, went ahead and put these on. These here are little tab things. Uh, they use them in cabinets to keep the uh, seat it'll hold it open like that and it'll hold it shut. So that way, if you have to pick it up and move it, it won't just fall open. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get to them legs. Uh, I got, let's see here, get stuff out of the way. No, they're falling all over the place both hands. We got these boards here. The legs. Now I'm gonna make some type of uh, some type of pattern maybe like this. 
can't even see it. I'll show you get some type of pattern maybe coming down and curving like that for a leg. The only thing is I gotta make four of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I gotta make eight of them. I gotta make a lot. So first we gotta do is uh, take some of this cardboard here and uh, figure out a pattern. Draw the pattern on there, cut it out, and then use that as a template. You gotta have two different ones because in the front, I want that front to go almost the entire span of the front. And then on the side, that'll be the front and the back. But on the sides, it'll be the same thing, only about half the size. Because it's only half the size that's under there. So, all right, let's get the drawing and figure this out. So here's the design I came up with. Uh, pretty simple, but relatively elegant. And then this was the other side. As you can see, it went together like that. Now, when I looked at it, I was thinking, huh, that's going to look all right. I like that as a leg. That'll look right. That'll look good. Well, then I thought, I wonder if this other piece will work for the other side. And you know what? Yes, it will. So, there we go. We got both of them done. Both of the patterns made in one swoop. Time to put it on the board, trace it out, start cutting. Now, when I got these cut and I got them put on with uh, just a single nail. Now, I let this corner like this, just like this, so I can round it off and make it look kind of cool. Um, the bottom I haven't put on, but yet they're sitting there. So I put a single nail in here and one in here, but I can't figure out how to make this sturdier. So I think what I'm going to do is take some angle iron and make a bracket for each side. Um, kind of like I did with the inside, instead of buying it, I'm just going to make one. Fit on here and in here to hold that in place because uh, I just can't really think of any better way to do it. So I'll make some brackets. All right, now that we've got the brackets made, the legs on, and everything's in place, which that wasn't very fun. I didn't like doing that. Uh, just time consuming is all. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a nice sanding, try to get close to the uh, the finish we want nice and smooth and uh, then we're gonna put this trim on the bottom here I think I have a piece of it somewhere nah, whatever. but it's the same as this trim here it's gonna go along the bottom here to clean up this edge so you don't see all these different divides there well let's get it sanded all right now I got the top nice and sanded nice and smooth I uh, went ahead and cut my dowel rods and put them in there put a little bit of glue in there uh, along the seam which should support everything should make everything tighten up and I uh, went ahead and laid some extra boards down across there put some weights on them to keep those dowel rods nice and flat and press down into those grooves now got some extra glue there try to get as much of it up as I could I mean it is what it is but all in all I think it's gonna look pretty damn nice when it's done all right all right, we got all the, uh, the dowel rods in, and we got them sanded so they're nice and smooth on there. Um, it's not perfect by no means, but it's handmade. We kind of want it to have some imperfections. You want it to look like it's been handmade. Um, also took some glue and some real fine sawdust, made some fillers there. Again, not purtiest, not perfect, but they're on there. They don't look bad. So now, next thing to do is get this up on the table, uh, hit it real quick with some paper just to make it nice and shiny smooth, and then start putting the oil on it. Now this oil, somewhere here, this here's what we got. We got some boiled linseed oil, protects and seals wood, improves flow and gloss, oil-based paints. We're not using it for paint, we're using it just to coat this wood. So what we're going to do is uh, get this all nice and cleaned off, take some of this oil, paint it on there, give it about 10 minutes, then wipe the excess off. And then we're going to repeat that for about oh, 400 times. Not really, maybe about four. About four times sounds good. Let's see what it looks like. Well, that there is after the first coat. Um, you can see there's some spots there. Like, eh, kind of doesn't show up on camera too well. But there's some light spots. That one shows up. 
that I believe is actually glue. Um, so once this dries overnight, I might try to sand some of them spots off. But uh, all in all, I think she looks pretty good. I like the uh, the dowel rods, being that they're a different type of wood. As you can see, the uh, oil reacts to them differently. It doesn't bring out the red, the red of the cedar, and it uh, makes it look pretty sharp. I like it. I like it a lot. So, as soon as you paint that seed, that uh, linseed oil on, you gotta wait a couple minutes, wipe it off with a rag. There's my rag, you can see it's got oil on it. You wanna get rid of that excess oil because it'll make it a little bit sticky. So, we're gonna let this dry overnight. Tomorrow morning, give it another coat. I wanna try to get about four coats on here, but uh, all in all, I think she's looking pretty good. Oh, and there we have it. She's all done. A uh, couple things I did here. Took myself a washer, bent it in half, drilled uh, two holes in it, one to screw it in, one to run a length of a chain through. Did that with four of them, just so I uh, had a way to anchor the chains. Because I thought about buying some uh, some like hooks or something, but it just didn't seem uh, didn't seem homemade and custom enough. So I wanted this thing to look like uh, somebody built it just with whatever they had laying around, and I think it came out pretty darn nice. Now, it has some imperfections, but I wanted it to be, it, I didn't want it to look like it was bought in a store. So, I think it looks pretty good. The uh, chains fold in on themselves just like they should. Whenever it closes so you don't have any chains sticking out, and the lid latches shut. Then to open it, you just pull it a little bit, and it comes right open. Looks pretty good. Now, being that this is my uh, first project I did like this, it took some time. Uh, never made a chest like this before. Hell, I never worked with cedar before. But I think it came out pretty darn nice. Also, that's the first time I've ever used the linseed oil. And uh, I gotta say, I'll be using a lot more of it because I like that stuff. So, uh, that's it. Um, it's definitely not a quick project. If you're looking to do something like this, be ready to invest some time because I got probably a good Oh man, if I had to say straight hours working through doing it, um, I don't know, maybe a good 20, 30 hours, but uh, that's not including glue drying time, that's just hands-on working time. But hey, I think it's beautiful, so if you want to make one for yourself, you better start practicing now because it's a lot of work and uh, a lot of tools you need too. Um, now I'm definitely cheating using power tools, but... Come on, let's face facts. It's almost 2020. Well, actually, by the time this airs, it will be 2020. Because, like I said, this is a Christmas gift. So, oh, I'm wore out. All right, time to go get some dinner. Thanks for joining in. Uh, maybe I inspired you to make something. Who knows? Uh, maybe I inspired you to go buy something because it is a lot of work. So, remember, whiskey draggers, like, subscribe, uh, comment. Um, go buy Arm Wrestling Roulette. Or go rent it at uh, Family Video or go on Amazon Prime. Uh, you can rent or buy it or stream it on air, whatever you do on that thing. Uh, all kind of stuff. Go over to Spreadshirt, get some merchandise, or go to Zazzle, I think it's called. We got some merchandise there. We got stuff everywhere. We're doing everything. Uh, we're actually planning on making a new movie, so that's in the works right now, too. So be sure to subscribe and keep up on all the crazy stuff we're doing because who knows what we're doing next. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. All right.